Polarization is a term used in optics to describe light, but it's also something that's easily seen in all kinds of everyday technology. Maybe you've recently watched a 3D movie and made use of polarizing 3D glasses. Or maybe on a sunny day, you reach for your polarizing sunglasses. Or perhaps you're into film photography, so you've made use of polarizing filters. But when we talk about polarization, what exactly are we talking about? When we say light is polarized, what do we mean? To understand polarization, we need to look at light as an electromagnetic wave with an electric field component and a perpendicular magnetic field component. When we're looking at polarization, we're only looking at the electric field component because that's the part that interacts with our eyes. In the animation shown here, the electric field wave is in blue. If we think of light as a traveling wave, that means we can model it with a function that hopefully you're all familiar with, a sine function or a cosine function. This means it has an amplitude, a frequency, and a phase shift. But what exactly does phase shift mean? Well, if we look at the two most basic trig functions, cosine and sine, we can see what a difference in phase shift causes. Sine and cosine are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. The result is that sine and cosine have maximums at different spots and minimums at different spots. If two waves were in phase with each other, they would have maximums at the same spot and minimums at the same spot. Light waves don't just travel as an individual wave through space. There's generally multiple waves propagating in the same space at the same time. The phase shift of these waves controls the polarization of the waves. The easiest polarization to talk about is linear polarization, because that's when all the waves are in phase with each other. This animation shows a vertically oriented linear polarized wave. We call it vertically oriented because it's straight up and down. This animation shows a horizontally oriented linearly polarized wave. It's horizontally oriented because it goes side to side. Now this animation shows what happens if the two waves are propagating in the same space and are in phase with each other. Since the two waves are in phase with each other, if we want to find the sum of the two waves, all we have to do is find the angle between the two existing angles. So between 0 and 90, we have 45 degrees. And to get the magnitude, we just have to add the magnitudes of the two waves. The resulting wave is shown in cyan, and we call this wave linearly polarized at 45 degrees. So linear polarization is just a term to describe when the resulting wave oscillates on the same plane around the axis. To make this possible, the waves that add up to the resulting wave must be in phase with each other. The other basic form of polarization is called circular polarization. That's when the waves that add up to make the resulting wave are out of phase with each other by 90 degrees. As we saw with the animation involving sine and cosine, two waves that are 90 degrees out of phase with each other make a circle. They make a circle because the sum of their magnitudes are constant at any given time. In this animation, the green circle in the bottom right represents the sum of the magnitudes of sine and cosine. If you're unfamiliar with this concept, I would advise looking more into sine and cosine functions and then coming back to this video. When we take the concept of two 90 degree out of phase waves and transfer it over to polarization of light, the result will be something called circular polarization. With circular polarization, the magnitude of the electric field is constant at all times because of this phase difference. The result is a wave that rotates around the axis in a circular direction. Changing the phase shift from positive 90 degrees to negative 90 degrees simply changes the direction of rotation. There are several ways to get polarized light, but the easiest way is probably just using something called polarizers. To produce linearly polarized light, we have something called linear polarizers. And to produce circularly polarized light, we have something called a quarter wave plate. We can see how linear polarizers work using the simulation from O Physics Interactive. On the left side is unpolarized light passing through a linear polarizer. When it passes through, the light is now polarized in the same direction as the linear polarizer. The linearly polarized light then comes into contact with another linear polarizer. If that linear polarizer is aligned with the first one like the scenario here, the light passes completely through. 
If we change the second polarizer to a 45 degree angle, then the light that passes through the second polarizer will then be polarized at a 45 degree angle. However, since the incoming light was not at a 45 degree angle, it will lose some intensity when passing through. The final scenario is when we rotate the second polarizer to be completely perpendicular to the first one. That means the polarized light incoming to the second polarizer will also be perpendicular to the second polarizer. When this happens, the light is unable to pass through completely. We can actually see these linear polarizers in action through the film filters that I showed you at the start of this video. So here we have two polarizing filters. They are both linear polarizers. Currently, they are oriented in the same direction. So the light gets through. It does get a little darker, but the light does get through. Now watch what happens as I rotate them. Once I get to a 90 degree difference in rotation, the light's blocked completely. I know I also mentioned something called a quarter wave plate, but there is a follow-up video to this one about how 3D glasses actually work. In that video, I go into much more detail about how quarter wave plates work and how we get circularly polarized light. But for now, that's it. That's the basics of polarized light. Mm -hmm.